All right. Let's go. My yeah. name's Dave Fortenbacher. I'm the founder and inventor of Liquid Snow Shovel. Uh, and basically, we're at the beginning uh, of the 2017 season, and we want to give you a little bit of application instruction. This particular door of, of this building is for employees, but if this was a main entrance, we'd want to really pay attention to how we're applying the product. If this is being applied during the day, during uh, pedestrian traffic, we have to make sure we keep a dry zone. So any common sprayer, however, the better the sprayer, the better the pump, the quicker you you get the job done and back into the warm weather. But if this is a main entrance with a lot of foot traffic and you have to apply during a day, you can't do it on off hours when there's nobody around, this is how you do it. You want to keep yourself approximately a dry zone in front of that door, applying no product at all. The reason is, is this is what we're going to consider a dry zone and this is what we're going to consider puddling. This is the type of foot traffic that you're going to receive. So you want to make sure that you've got a dry zone there during the day, during uh, normal foot traffic. If it's before 8 or after 5, normal working hours, then you can feel free to apply right up to the door <coughs> with that simple application. Now this is a first time application for the year. You'll notice that I've got some puddling. You do want to puddle it the first time. The reason is, is because uh, the volume of this product is going to get lost in the porosity of the surface at the very first application. As you reapply, you're going to start to build more and more residual layer and you won't need to apply as much. I'll give you an example of a regular application. If we've already applied once and now we're reapplying, this would be the volume that you're looking at reapplying. And that would be it. Optimal application usually a day or two before the storm. We have a storm coming tonight, so obviously this application works fine. As you're working throughout the season, you're gonna find that you'll be able to apply a week or, or at least a few days before the storm, and you'll get the same result as if we were applying a matter of hours. Now, all surfaces aren't created equal, so when you're testing the product, pick an area of the concrete. So we're gonna pick this area first. And I'm going to really saturate it. This is going to be an over application as you learn the product. But as it is right now, I want you to see what would be considered an over application. When you notice that the product is starting to build up on the surface, that would be considered an over application or a first time application. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is I want you to see number one, that the product works, then number two, somewhere in between this application and then what we would consider a maintenance application, which is that amount. Somewhere between these two applications is what's gonna meet your expectation for your surface. I personally am a zero tolerance, so I'm gonna apply more material uh, as, I'm, as I'm applying. Others just wanna have an anti-bonding surface there or an active melting barrier. So when we're dropping our blades shovels, snow blowers, we get back down to bare surface and there's no more salting necessary. Now if you find that you're removing it and you have maybe some spots that are sticking or uh, some trailings from your plow and it's not melting off and the sun comes up, then yes, you probably want to reapply. But typically it's a once a week application and you should be able to get between one and three snow events out of each application. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just finish this section out here. Maybe that's dead time on the video. But get yourself a nice applicator. Uh, we do manufacture the sidewalk buddies. Uh, we do recommend uh, another product called the Snow Raider. Uh, the Snow Raider is a, is a stand on unit that, if you're doing large amounts of sidewalks, for those that, well, we, we do a lot of colleges and universities, they'll use that. Smaller sidewalks like this, our sidewalk buddy is perfect for that. That's got a uh, bar on it. As fast as you can walk, you can apply it. Also has a wand that'll spray about 25 feet. So we can do places like this. Here's a truck well. Let me show you a truck well application. Now with truck wells, because we don't have a lot of volume, 
<clears throat> we don't necessarily have to have the volume of liquid down to do what we need it to. Now this is this is obviously the beginning of the year, it's dirty, but I'll give you an idea, just a quick application of a truck well. And again, as an anti-bonding agent, we're gonna call it in this particular area, a light application is really all that's necessary. We're not trying to uh, necessarily keep uh, the snow down to zero tolerance in a truck well like we are in a walking pedestrian area. And again, the application is important. The applicator itself, excuse me, is important. If you're trying to do this with a pump-up sprayer, uh, if this cold the temperatures, you'll probably do it once and you'll never do it again. So make sure you spend the money on a good applicator. We do help customers retrofit equipment. So if you do have a liquid fertilizer spreader or something that you have been using in the past, uh, please feel free to call us because we are able to um, help you retrofit your existing equipment. As far as cleanup is concerned, hot water and Dawn dish soap takes it right up. And it also helps with cleaning out that equipment. So that's all you would do for a pre-application on a truck well. Now I want you to notice that there's painted lines here. In a truck well, it's not as important. If we were in a pedestrian area, we want to try and stay away from the painted uh, areas because those unfortunately don't allow the product to get absorbed. They set on the surface and you potentially could make a slippery condition. Now if I come over here and put my foot on this, you can, you can feel it, but there's still enough grip there, you're not gonna fall. But you still wanna pay attention to painted areas. So how much material do you think we used just in these two little sections? I mean, this was, about, well, we put three gallons in there. Yeah. Three and a half gallons in there. You know, your first application, uh, the, the rates really are really hard to, to, to uh, come up with an exact number because every concrete's different. Uh, some is sealed, some isn't sealed. You know, some is five years old, 10 years old, some is 30 years old, and it all reacts differently. So start with a benchmark of a thousand square feet per gallon. So we probably have uh, maybe 300 feet, square feet, maybe two and a half, two, 200 square feet, plus a little bit over there. We probably burned a gallon or two. Uh, what, you'll find is you're, what you'll find when you're applying to your surface is that there's really, there's really not a, it's, 1,000 square feet per gallon that covers every situation. Because if you look at this asphalt, for instance, watch what happens when I lay material on this asphalt. You see how that really stands up? Now, it'll stay like that for a long time. The reason is, is with asphalt, the bituminous in the asphalt, the glue, the binder, is actually holding the product to the surface. Much tighter surface than concrete. Concrete's more brittle, asphalt's more pliable. So it keeps, this, it keeps our product right at the surface. You're gonna get 2,000 square feet, maybe even more, if it's a sealed parking lot versus an unsealed parking lot. So again, start with a benchmark, pick a couple of areas. One area heavily saturate, the other area lightly mist. Let the snow come through, do your removal. From that, you're gonna decide what kind of volume you need on that particular property. And it will be different on each property. Great, good.